Welcome to truck transportation. In this video, we will be calculating the chargeable weight and applying freight rates. Riddle me this, which weighs more, a pound of feathers or a pound of bricks? When it comes to calculating trucking rates, even though both boxes may weigh 10 pounds, they won't be charged equally. Since the bigger box will take up more room in the truck, it ends up getting charged more. So in trucking, we call this a chargeable weight. So even though both boxes weigh the same, truckers will calculate what's called a volume weight based on the dimensions of the freight and how much room it takes up. And that determines how much they will charge for moving the boxes. Calculating chargeable weight means not just looking at how much a shipment weighs, but also how much room it takes up. When you are looking at a shipment, you have the actual weight, what the shipment actually weighs. You have the volume weight, which is how much space the shipment actually takes up. And the larger of the two is what you have as your chargeable weight. So the chargeable weight is always going to be the larger between the actual and the volume weight. There are five steps for calculating your trucking rates and your chargeable weight. Step one is calculate the actual weight. Step two is calculate the volume weight. Step three is determine your chargeable weight. Step four is determine the freight rates. And step five is to calculate your freight charge. To calculate the actual weight, you need to look at how many pieces are in the shipment, what is the weight of each piece, and then multiply the number of pieces in the shipment by the weight of each piece. That will give you the actual weight. In trucking, all weight must be in pounds. At this point, stop and look at what the actual weight is that you calculated. Is the weight in pounds? If the weight is in pounds, then you can proceed to the next step and calculate the volume weight. However, if the weight is not in pounds and is in kilograms, you need to convert the kilos to pounds. You do this by multiplying the kilos by 2.2046. This will convert the kilograms to pounds. Once the actual weight is in pounds, you can now calculate the volume weight. You have to determine how many pieces are there and what the dimensions are of each piece. You will then multiply the number of pieces in the shipment by the length, width, and height. This will give you the cubic dimensions. Before you can continue calculating your volume weight, you need to convert your cubic dimensions into cubic feet. Take a look at your dimensions and look at what they are being measured in. If they are being measured in inches, then you need to convert to cubic feet by dividing by 1728. If your dimensions are in centimeters, you convert to cubic feet by dividing by 28316.847. And if your dimensions are in meters, you convert to cubic feet by multiplying by 35.3147. Now that you have the cubic feet, I want you to stop. Is cubic feet a weight? You are looking for a weight in pounds, but now you have cubic feet. What do you do? This is where your freight ratio density comes in. In order to apply the freight ratio density, you must multiply the cubic feet by 10. This will convert the cubic feet into pounds and you can then compare the actual weight and the volume weight. Now you can determine the chargeable weight. You have the actual weight and you have the volume weight. The higher of the two is your chargeable weight. Once you have the freight rate, you can now take the chargeable weight, multiply it by the freight weight, and divided by 100. 
in Canadian trucking, all freight rates are per hundred pounds. So you have to remember to divide by 100. Let's get started on some practice questions. You have a shipment that is one wooden crate. The dimensions are 36 by 24 by 24. The weight is 550 pounds. The CWT rate is $11.65. Let's calculate the actual weights. We would take the one piece and multiply it by the 550 pounds and our actual weight will then be 550 pounds. Now that we have calculated the actual weight, let's calculate the cubic dimensions. So we're going to multiply the number of pieces by the cubic dimensions. This will give us 20,736 cubic inches. We then convert the cubic inches into cubic feet by dividing by 1728, and that gives us 12 cubic feet. Now that you have the cubic feet, you are going to apply the freight density ratio and multiply by 10. This gives you a volume weight of 120 pounds. You can now determine the chargeable weight. The actual weight is 550 pounds. The volume weight is 120 pounds. Chargeable weight is always the higher between actual weight and volume weight. So in this case, the actual weight of 550 pounds will be your chargeable weight. You can now apply the freight rate by taking the chargeable weight, multiplying it by the freight rate and dividing it by 100. And that will give you your freight rate. In this case, the shipment would cost $64.08 Canadian. Now it's your turn. What's the actual weight for the shipment? Pause the video if you need to. Now it's time to start calculating the volume weight. What is the cubic dimensions for the shipment? Pause the video if you have to. Now that you have the cubic dimensions, it's time to convert it to cubic feet. Stop the video if you need to. Don't forget to apply the freight ratio density. That you have the actual and the volume weight. What is the chargeable weight? Now that you have the chargeable weight, don't forget to apply the freight rates and find out what your freight charges are. Sometimes you can actually save money by declaring a higher weight. This is called a weight break. This is where you pay less money by declaring a higher weight. The smaller the shipment, the higher the rate. The bigger the shipment, the lower the rate. So you want your shipments to be bigger. So using a weight break means increasing the chargeable weight of the cargo so that the higher increment can be applied. Therefore, you're offering lower rates. Always be aware of the weight break and be sure if you're looking at a rate sheet, if your shipment uh, chargeable weight falls right in between two weights, you're going to check to see if that weight break is there, if you can save money by declaring a higher weight. Something else to consider is liability. Unless otherwise stated, a road carrier's limit of liability is $2 Canadian per pound or $4.41 Canadian per kilo in Canada. In Canada, all truck shipments must move on a truck bill of lading. There is no real uniformity in a truck bill of lading. However, one bill of lading is required for each shipment. A truck bill of lading functions as a receipt for good, a receipt of goods for shipment, contract of carriage, but it does not confer title of ownership of the goods. Some advantages of moving freight by truck are 
Trucks can offer door-to-door service. Uh, they don't depend on schedules, so they're more flexible. They offer delivery to remote parts of the country, and they can change the route as necessary to avoid obstacles and traffic jams. Some disadvantages of moving by truck is they are subject to interprovincial licensing regulations and road weight limitations. It's not suitable for bulk transport. There's a higher risk factor due to highway accidents, pollution problems, and trucks require greater maintenance.